I think we've only scratched the surface of our comprehension of how advanced those civilizations were and what they knew during this time period. And that's why we need to stop ignoring the past and think it's primitive. We, If we want to find answers for understanding the greater aspects of everything, mm -hmm. again, not how to get a rocket to the moon. How about understanding our role in the universe? The journey really is about exploring within. I'd like to welcome to the show, Matt LaCroix. How you doing, Matt? Hey, it's great to be here, Alex. I'm really excited for this conversation today. Me too, my friend. Thank you so much for coming on the show, brother. I, I am I'm excited to talk about some of my favorite topics about ancient civilization, spirituality mixed in, origins of humanity, all sorts of amazing stuff. Stuff that the, the mainstream archaeological movement has not really talked about. And it's kind of like lost history and things that we we kind of just smell that things aren't right. The story that we're being told, we're like, really? That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. It's right. It's, it's, it, ha I think it's happened in religion in a lot of ways. And now it's happening in archaeology. And, and, and I think it's in physics and so many different avenues that people are just like, this doesn't make any sense. And right. you are one of those voices out there trying to put the, the good word out. So I appreciate you. Uh, so Thank first you. question, so first question, man, I have to ask you. How did you start your journey down the ancient civilizations rabbit hole? For me, I, I sort of fell into it, really knowing where I was going to go. It just it just came into my lap. I remember being a kid and being absolutely fascinated beyond belief, just almost like a bit subconsciously, too, because I didn't really understand why I was fascinated by it. It was, you know, I was young, but watching watching things like Stargate and watching anything related to an ancient civilization, even things like Indiana Jones with them looking for ancient artifacts, it was always speaking to something in me that was very powerful. Powerful. But it wasn't until years later, with an open mind and with all these curiosities, and like you said, maybe questioning things and wanting to know more. And that narrative led me to falling into this entire career that is now a full-time career for me, trying to establish that the, so that the, the mainstream narrative understands this entire lost chapter, our story, mm -hmm. a, a lost chapter that is very mysterious and unknown that goes back to these points of aspects of, of us that seem to have been lost later on and not this primitive start, but this more sophisticated divine nature of who we knew we were and what we were doing, building these giant pyramids and temples. Whereas later on, even though we may be technologically advanced now with all these phones and computers, I don't think we really understand who we are like they did. And now in some of the discoveries that we're going to talk about today, some of these cutting edge, new, incredible things that are happening is unveiling that mystery in a way that's never existed before, where we're actually peering in and being able to look at evidence from a wide variety of different places, whether it's ancient texts or archaeological discoveries, or even just ancient biblical narratives. We're looking at something we can tie in a lot of different things, rewrite the narrative and say, look, we have an entire lost chapter of our history that seems to be multiple epics, not even just one little piece that we have had that has been lost so much over time that we have almost forgotten who we are and where we come from and how far back our story goes. So I think that one thing from the work that I do on my show, I've speaking to so many different spiritual masters and people from different walks of life, from quantum physicists to channelers and other people. And the one thing that the constant narrative that I keep hearing is that we are in a great consciousness shift, that we are all lifting up um, our awareness. And I think this is getting caught up in that because you need to question what has been told to you because you're now awakening to truths that are undeniable. And, right. and these artifacts are starting to now appear today, not a hundred years ago, which they would have probably cracked over, walked over, not even thought about. And the narrative of the the narrative of the, of the pyramids being uh tombs, uh basically it was just a, a few guys, uh a few guys from England. It I was think, actually right? a forgery. Yeah, it wasn't even real. In yeah, the 1800s, it, 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 they actually forged the name Khufu, found inside the chamber below the king's chamber, and it was actually never really written in there. And there was a right. lot of speculation and evidence that that entire story is, is actually a complete forgery. And isn't it funny that every single temple in Egypt, 
the houses, anything, has hieroglyphs everywhere telling you all the propaganda of how they built it and what's going on and this and that. But in the Great Pyramid, there's nothing to my right. understanding. There's just nothing. Not a, All three not of a the Great Pyramids have nothing to do with the dynastic pharaohs at all. They're from right. a completely different time period. And right. none of them have any writings. Anything that was written later is from a later time period, such as this, the Great Sphinx, which was never actually supposed to be a sphinx, like it's shown with a, a pharaoh's head. It was You can see the proportions of the body versus right. the head are extremely off, showing you that they later carved the head to be a pharaoh, which we find a lot of evidence that used to be a lion. But it's just showing you that thousands and thousands of years go by right where maybe a civilization had been destroyed in some catastrophe and they have all these ruins these remnants of incredible megaliths and temples and all these things and these other groups come through later and find these ruins and they know how sacred and important they are and then they build right on top of them they carve their own information in and then thousands of years later we confuse them with being the original builders of those which is not the case and it, it would be the equivalent of uh of a, a native or a bushman in the middle of the amazon or from the from australia or something like that in the bush that had never seen anything of our technology all of a sudden being dropped into new york city a thousand years after we all left right for whatever reason and trying to figure out what these buildings, if there's any buildings left, what are the remnants of these creations? Right. They, they pick, they'll pick up a, a, a phone or a computer and they're like, what is this? It doesn't work anymore. They're trying right. to, to, they're trying to investigate to figure out what they were and then building an, a, another society on top of that. Right. It, it's not that far fetched, man. It's, it's not a far fetched idea at all. Well, but it's, it's being fought very, very recently by this doctrine of archaeology. And I think that's something we just need to establish to understand. Because so many people ask me, why would you hide all this? Why would this not be something that's accepted by the by the mainstream narrative? What you said is is spot on. Rather than looking at civilizations all around the world, and some of them are not as old as others, we can't just blanket statement and say everything is older and then is, is like at this particular age. And no, some things are younger, but in some parts of the world, South America, some parts of Mexico, throughout parts of like Egypt, Asia, especially, Asia, um, yeah. Baalbek, Lebanon area, Syria, Turkey that we're going to get into now, mm -hmm. China, Greece, Japan. I could go on and on. There's others as well that I didn't mention which has evidence for much, much more ancient civilizations that lived there with highly sophisticated building techniques using stone that would have been impossible for later civilizations using things like Bronze Age tools to even be able to create, carve, manipulate at all. It's from a lost time period. It's like what you just said, that Bushman, that group from the jungle that goes, that is wandering around, you know, searching around one day and then they find these ruins overgrown in the jungle or somewhere and they and they maybe they find ancient writings and they're reading about it in over hundreds of years that culture adopts that that place what about where they learned everything and what about mm. who that original foundation like machu picchu right or oye te tambo or parts of egypt and turkey these lower bases that are with these giant, perfectly created stones, right? Especially some something like Saskatchewan, right? Mm -hmm. Perfectly created polygonal stones put in place where this it would have been impossible with some kind of primitive type of technology. And yet they were able to achieve things that we would have trouble with even today. Now, but that means that they knew things and knew how to do things that we don't understand. Now, that period of time we call the lost civilizations. And that mm -hmm. ended around 12,800 years ago during what's called the Ice Age, the end of the Ice Age or the Younger Dryas. Mm -hmm. And that actually has two to three periods before it that people don't talk about called the Older Dryas and the Oldest Dryas that shows this time period of volatility on the Earth for 1,500 to 2,000 years of of these events and things that are happening that wiped out that entire chapter and then it became a myth today and that's what we're trying to prove so from your from your uh, explorations and research what is the true origin of humans humanity's timeline i mean cuz we've been told we started around 
uh, six to 10,000 years ago, there was some hunter gatherers right. back in the day. And we went and then we started, we started hunting, gathering some agriculture, and we kind of grew into where we are today, kind of very ev evolutionary. Um, but that doesn't line up with these pieces, these large pieces of evidence that are being discovered around the world, like no. the main Great Pyramid. That is so right. undeniably you can't even try to create that today. Like it, it's, it's no. such a, like, you can't, you can't just look at that and go two and a half oh. million stone blocks, an average of five to oh, 10 and, tons each. And let's not even talk about the, the perfection of where it was laid, where it's true North on the lining parallel to star constellations. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. All of this <laughs> insane stuff that we couldn't right. even have done 60 or 70 years ago, a hundred years ago, we probably couldn't have done now. That these calculations now would be almost nearly impossible to I do. I don't think we could get it as nearly as close as they got it with mathematically being like a half ratio of our planet being perfectly like um, designed to be this harmonic resonant aspect of like half the, right. the ratio of the earth, but also representative of like th the above and below aspects of energy of the planet. It's wild when they created those because we truly don't even know the functional the functionality and purpose of it today we have theories on things like the king queen's chamber but why do they have these star alignments to things like sirius and orion during specific time periods when we have no idea why they even built it in the first place i mean energy other things we have theories but we don't right. fully know today so what you do if you're this primitive civilization is you somehow managed to not only know where the 30th parallel is know exactly the ratio of the earth the moon the sun but you also somehow have woven that into the designs on the ground to match the stars in the sky so you take the three belt stars and you align temples on the ground like teotihuacan to mimic the stars above and then on the other side of the world at egypt you build the three pyramids of giza Three, the main pyramids of Giza, and you align those exactly to the three belt stars as well. What are you creating there? What kind of synergy are you creating? I don't think humanity has, I think we've only scratched the surface of our comprehension of how advanced those civilizations were and what they knew during this time period. And that's why we need to stop ignoring the past and think it's primitive. We, If we want to find answers for understanding the greater aspects of everything, mm -hmm. again, not how to get a rocket to the moon. How about understanding our role in the universe? The journey really is about exploring within. That's really what this is about. Right. We got to stop looking out so much and start looking more in because we are the macrocosm of the entire universe. The, we're the microcosm of the macrocosm. So we are the totality of everything. And that's why... It's incredible to see that the ancients knew all of that. They they knew that, and then they built all these structures to basically map and align it. And here we are. We're like, well, well, they just built it like that because they wanted to, and there's no there's no connection to anything, and it's just all random. And that's what we're told is that a random group decided to get together and do this for no reason. But the thing is that you that that the establishment of all sciences and archaeology included in physics and everything are looking at things from a time and space and materialistic point of view. Exactly. That's the whole point. That ev everything, that's the lens that they see everything in. Yes. So they can't comprehend that there was a greater purpose for the, the Great Pyramids or exactly. for Gobekli Tepe or for any of these other sites around the world because it doesn't fit with the narrative that they are funneling every filtering everything through exactly right if they move if they open their mind to a place where there is such a thing as consciousness yeah there is an internal and an, an internal world we're discovering things now about ourselves that 50 years ago we didn't know i right. mean meditate i always use meditation as an example 50 years ago you were meditating you were a hippie now CEOs of Fortune 500 right. companies go meditate take breaks and go do and, it. Yeah, right, because they understand the scientific benefits of it, but right. also on the mind balance. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It lowers the blood pressure. That's all, everything. And then, but 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 before it wasn't even comprehensible. And I think that's where we're going here. But I agree with what you said. Is that it's about if it, if you shake the 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 turnip truck, if you will, uh, of of history. It it does start to a lot of dominoes start to fall. They don't exactly. want to be touched. The whole thing just collapses, doesn't it? Like like the foundation. The house of cards. 
It's house of right. cards. It's a house of yeah. cards. The house of cards starts to come because it's like, well, wait, because it, it's, you know, when you look, when you're a critical thinker and you look at religion and, you know, I'm a recovering Catholic, as I always say. So, uh, <laughs> so, you know, when you start to analyze even where I came from Catholicism, just basic concepts of like, oh, you're not Catholic. You're going to hell. I'm sorry. You just weren't born in the right family at the right time. Right. I apologize. It's not your fault. It's just the way the cards were. I'm better than you, obviously, because I was born in the, these ideas. Were like this doesn't go along with anything Christ said. Right. Christ never said anything like that, you know. And all of these ideas. So when you start to analyze these kind of things, you start to open your mind to other possibilities. But the academics, their whole livelihood is based around. That's that's the point exactly. The, the paradigm that they've created. You can't. Can you imagine going into? Yale or or Cambridge or Oxford or Harvard and start to change the timelines of humanity? Well, because you're stepping on the you're stepping on the toes of everyone that came before you. Right. Which That's is the whole point. But the point is it's you should be stepping on everyone's toes because I promise you guys from 50 years ago, 100 years ago, 500 years ago didn't have it figured out. But they're not but they're not and and they're right. very scared to and can I I want to mention something on that because I think that's a great point. Yeah. We I give myself, I put myself in this as well. I've been a little bit too critical with archaeologists. And mm -hmm. I want to um, just tell a little story for a second about this, is that sure. in uncovering the secrets of this era at Civilization, I wanted to study every single archaeological paper since some of the oldest of these sites and then the newer ones. There was a, some original older ones and then some newer ones. Um, but from back from the very beginning, I diligently read every single paper that they wrote on these sites every single one there's like five of them there's not that many they're well they're like articles they're scientific articles and in these papers they go to a site and it's a set of archaeologists <clears throat> and they're discovering they're on they're basically talking about what was found at the sites when they uncovered them whether or not some of them were only partially uncovered or whatever but it doesn't matter but what was in each one that I found remarkable and I highlighted every single section and we're, we're going to find some creative ways on how to use in the future, just so you know. Mm -hmm. But in every single section, there'll be these periods of time where you see an archaeologist that's there uncovering and finding something. And the box relief from Kef Temple that I talked about is a perfect example. When they found that, the archaeologists were going nuts. In this paper, they're writing all about how it's highly sophisticated, built out of basalt, incredibly designed with iconography that was so rich culturally and blah, 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 blah. But then they run into these issues. They start talking about how the civilization that's credited with, with creating it, that's not the right one, is called the Urartian civilization. They keep mentioning in the papers how none of the symbols or the iconography match with the Urartian civilization. And furthermore, even symbols like the passing the tree of life, the seeds of the tree of life and the, the knowledge of that, they label in these archaeological papers, and I'm sorry if I'm going to embarrass anyone for this, they think they're spears, spearheads. Mm -hmm. They think they're spearheads because they're looking at the Urartian civilization as a war empire, and they think that those are spearheads for war, like he's holding a spear. Mm -hmm. Yet, it looks exactly like the tree of life, and it's coming out of this cup. So what I'm trying to say is this. Archaeologists, why are they coming up with those conclusions? They state in there why. They say that the fathers of them, the fathers of that research, that had originally written the regional archaeological research years and years before that, that they looked up to as, as scholarly credentials, they're the ones who determined what those symbols mean and, and who built what and what goes where, and they can't, they can't go against it. There was even parts of some of the articles where they were saying things like, well, I speculate this, or this doesn't really look like this, or this work seems far beyond anything that the Artean civilization has done. There's a lot of areas like that where they want to question it, but they only go so far in every single spot to not, to not disrespect at all the people that have come before them. And that is exactly what has happened. It is a doctrine around the world, whether it's Egypt or Turkey or Peru, that has been woven with these mainstream heroes in, in their mind in the archaeological world. Oh, 
blah, 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 and blah, blah, blah. They they changed my life. I'm an archaeologist because of them. That that woven narrative is fiercely protected. Fiercely protected. And any archaeologist that goes and gets their degree and they're in there finally working and they're making discoveries, they can't go against that. They'll lose their entire academic um, um, license. They'll be laughed at. They'll literally be pushed out of everything they've done. So instead of willing to do that because it's not the right time yet, because the world mm -hmm. wasn't open yet, again, timing is everything. That's going to change in the future. But right now, archaeologists are too scared to step up, even if they know very well, and they do, that things are not matching up. And they're not aligning, and they're not what is this narrative we're told. And this civilization, the ARS civilization, is a perfect example for that. Matt, I appreciate you and the work you're doing, my friend. Thank you again. I can't wait to have you back on and, and keep our conversation going. So I appreciate you, man. Thank you, Alex. You as well, my friend. We'll talk soon.